It's actually what I call my first muscion ever. It's one of these Poseidons. Yeah, those are classics. And of course, Medusas too. Wow. It seems to be trolling's the kind of the, the big, the people, big way to get them, or is it? Like troll because they see it on YouTube videos and stuff. Right. Uh, you know, and it's you know guys you don't want to cast, they just go for a boat ride. Um, yeah, yeah. There's there's definitely a handful of us that you know we, we do a lot of casting. Nice. I, I take a musky with a rod in hand over a trolling musky. And right. And right. I even fly fish for them. So. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, my name's Jason. By the way. Yeah. Nice to meet. Sorry, we didn't formally <laughs> introduce. How's it going? This is an awesome shop. You guys, you guys have probably 30 times the amount that every tackle store in Bangor has. So it is it is a pleasant surprise to see some a nice selection here. We're at the Minnow Tackle Shop right now, getting locked and loaded for gear over the next couple days. We're gonna need a lot of it because the river will be fishing has a little bit of everything. In a few short moments, we're gonna meet up with Ben, who is a local who fishes these waters, and a dude I met on Instagram not too long ago. He's really the main reason why I know about this fishery, and I'm gonna be excited to figure out how he approaches it and maybe learn a thing or two from him. But for now, let's uh, spend some money, get some tackle, and get prepared for the next four days. Hopefully, it's an amazing and epic fish. I think we're stocked up. We've got everything for everything. A little bit of striped bass gear, a little bit of musky gear, a little bit of small gear, a little bit of sturgeon gear, all in one river. It's nuts. I might do one more picture with, uh, with you holding Yeah, of course. Incredible. You whipped that up in, what was that, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Yeah, yeah about that. <laughs> That's pretty insane, man. <laughs> if you guys ever come fish here, this is the only place to go. This is uh, it's a one-stop shop. Thank you. Everything you need for the river is right here. And we, uh, believe me, we got it. I love spending money, so <laughs> I'm good at it, too. All awesome. right. Out of here. Thank you guys. Oh, nice. I like a good cluster. Looking good. Picture where you're like, oh shit, like holding it yeah. tight. Yeah. <laughs> What's your biggest out of here? Biggest musky? The below the dam's a uh, 47 and a half. Wow. Above the dam's 50 and a half. So there's bigger fish above the dam's, is that what you're saying, just generally speaking? Yeah. Less competition or? Well, they don't have the stripers to deal with. Right. But it's just habitat. There's so much bait. Is that a big problem down here? Just it, they're not a problem. It's those houseboats down there. Oh. I'll be trolling down the river, and they'll purposely trim up and make a wake that's like Why? this deep. And I'm not in a big boat. Yeah, you get splashed. One boat here a couple of years ago. They did it. The there we go. Fish, 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 fish. No way, dude. No way. No way. Wow. Is this a fish? What the f I yeah. have? No, it's not a fish. Yes, oh, yeah, it, it is. is. Oh, my God, it is. No way. Oh, my. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. We're good. There we go. <laughs> I cannot believe that just happened, dude. Holy s. Three hour car ride. Just moments of daylight left, and we caught one of the more harder fish to catch within just like less than an hour. There we go. Perfect. Let's get that bait out of that. Unbelievable, dude. Oh, that, just in case. Take a look at that. A muskie. One of the more elusive fish here in the St. John's. A fish that has time and time duped me again. Not only an amazing catch, but fun to do it with you, man. It's been a long time since I've been following you on Instagram, watching what you do down here, and that is trolling for these guys. This is a small example, but a rare catch for me, especially just because of how challenging it is to get these things. I know very little, and it was cool to link up with Ben and him kind of show us our ways. We're gonna get this guy back in the minute, grab some pictures, and send her on her way. What a cool freaking fish. Oh, she's ready to go. <laughs> Again, one more time. Insane. I honestly didn't think we'd get a chance to fish that. We came in super late, had to get everything we needed for all the species we plan on catching. Also cool that Ben was available too, just random chance. He's got clients that he's fishing with tomorrow after these fish as well. But oh my gosh, that was the hard one. I was like, if we're gonna, 
if we're gonna catch one of these, it's gonna be probably at the very end of the trip. It's gonna be like, we're gonna knock out the smallmouth, the striper, the sturgeon, and then the muskie's gonna be the real difficult one. But to think that that's the fish that we ticked off first on our list is absolutely insane. Thank you again, man. Hey, not a problem. He's just like, pull up to this. Just work your way around and uh, bomb some cast in the fast moving current. So up daylight, let's keep cranking. That was insane. What's pretty wild about this place in specific that Ben was explaining to me is that they are in an area where this water fluctuates every single day, twice a day. Switching up lures right now, just take a gander at some of these baits that, you know, you can throw for these fish. It's like, there's no such thing as too big. Giant sucker imitations, crazy lures like the Medusa, which is similar to what I just caught my muskie on, but instead of one curl tail, you've got three. Uh, actually, I might switch to this, honestly, something pretty aggressive, but they're such cool fish, you know, no matter if they're 30 inches or 50 inches, they're exciting, they're fun, they're beautiful, and it's important to send them back, too. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, did they get introduced by humans? They did, yeah. So basically, up in, I think it was the 60s or the 70s and maybe in the 80s they got introduced into a lake up on the headwaters of the St. John River called uh, Lac Frontier and rumor has it over a big flood that uh, they flooded out over the dam that leads to the headwaters of this river here and I guess over time they uh, made their way down the system. For, pers for perspective how many miles is that from here like where, where they potentially originated? I would say roughly 600 kilometers. Holy shit. yeah, sorry, I forgot where to can. We're doing kilometers, my bad. 600 kilometers, which would be what, roughly like? 450 miles? Yeah, 450 miles. And this is a fish that has only been in the system for less than a century. Put that in perspective. And they're thriving, they love it here. They're, they've got bait, they've got so much food. And, and this current is awesome for these musky bees because it keeps this water cool year round. Anyway, I just let you guys find that interesting. This is not a, a, an established musky fishery. It's not like the stuff that, you, you know, it's not like those natural lakes that you fish up in Michigan or Minnesota or Wisconsin. It's, it's just so different, which I love. I just can't believe we freaking did it. That was, that was crazy. Let's keep fishing though. Still plenty of daylight left. Oh, on? Oh, did you just have another one? <laughs> My gosh, dude. That's a sign of a musky. It's not like a bass where it's like, you may not have gotten a bite. Musky, for sure, you know if you're getting a bite because we'll just slice up your bait. Imagine that your hand. You got a bit by him? Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I put teeth in my hands and uh, let me tell you, it doesn't feel good. Don't recommend it? No. switching gears now and chasing after another species. This species is a fish that you cannot catch in the United States, but for whatever reason, I think it's a good reason, Canadian anglers can actually target, catch, and release these fish. The Atlantic sturgeon, which is endangered and also prohibited to catch in the US, can be caught up here. It's the weirdest thing. Like as soon as you cross the border, you're totally cool. The season is closed in June. After July 1st, you can catch them. We're way into July and it has been a goal of mine to wrangle with one of these. We're running out of daylight, but we still might be able to make it happen. We're gonna pull up on this sand flat and soak some night crawlers, good old fashioned way. Last time I used freaking hook and worm was probably 13, 14 years old. It used to be my go-to, I would sit on my grandparents' dock on Lake X. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that place. And I'd soak worms until my freaking arms would fall off. I'd catch like, I'd count how many fish I'd catch. I'd catch a hundred fish a day on the same spot with the same hook and have like four empty containers of, of a dozen worms. Cool. Oh, that was... I'd be lying if I said that uh, certain fishing is a little bit easier than the musky fishing right now. I'm getting some bites, but can't can't quite dial in the hook set. They're definitely here. A couple just jumped. I'm getting some packs. Just need to sting one now. And if we don't sting one tonight, listen, we've got all trip to make this happen.
Geez, sorry about that. Oh, this is nice and cozy. Well, we've made it to our Airbnb. <sighs> what a crazy freaking day. To think that that much can happen in just, I don't know, an hour, a little bit less. We packed up shop on our sturgeon mission. Didn't catch a sturgeon, but we did catch a, a muskie. And we've got plenty more days to catch a sturgeon. It's, I don't wanna say the easier fish in this river to catch, but it's, it's not the hardest. I mean, the hardest was the muskie, in my opinion. But gosh, we got lucky. We really did. And also too, thanks to Ben, he put us in the right spot at the right time. And uh, he's, he's the one to go with. If you guys want to book a trip with him, do so. I'll leave his Instagram down below. He's, he's, a, he's an absolute legend when it comes to the St. John's River and all the fish that dwell in it. But this is where we'll be staying over the next couple of days. But this will be nice. It's just cool to think that we finally get a chance to fish this section of the Johns. And this, the crazy thing is, this is the only part of the St. John's where you can catch all these fish that we're after. Everything north of the dam, you don't get Atlantic salmon, you don't get sturgeon, and you don't get striped bass. Really like some of the three main ones. Now, while we're not here for the Atlantic salmon, we are here for the sturgeon and, and the striped bass, along with, of course, the smallmouth and the muskie. So it's just cool to be in a, in a position in which tomorrow we have the opportunity to catch literally any of those. So we might venture downriver, we might go above the dam, see if we can get some big smallmouth. But yeah, I'm gonna plug the boat in, charge her up, get some rods rigged, and get ready for literally an all-day fishing excursion because we have a lot left to catch. St. John's River, day number one, I'd say was a success. Good morning, wieners. Welcome to day number two on the Johns. Our hunt for the multi-species trifecta continues. Yesterday was amazing. Got that musk lunge, knocked out. Doesn't mean we're still not gonna chase after him, but a huge weight is definitely lift off our shoulders. Before we even can put the boat in the water, I've gotta make a cast. Where we're staying at this Airbnb, there is a river that actually flows into the Johns. So technically it's a part of the Johns and it looks incredible. I'm gonna grab one of my favorite top water lures ever, that being a little blooper, and make a couple casts before we uh, hook up the boat and head to the ramp. I uh, woke up this morning, I looked outside, I'm like, wow, that looks good. So we gotta test, uh, test my theory as to whether or not it actually is good or if it is just all looks. Oh, that was sick. That was sick. I'm on, I'm on, oh yeah, oh yeah. That'll get you up in the morning. That will get you up in the morning. Oh, she on a rock, she's on a rock. No, that is quite unfortunate. I'm not sure what to do in this situation. Oh, she just came undone, we're good, we're good. Oh my goodness, look at that. Hoo-wee. That is heart pounding. That is some heart pounding activity to start our morning off. Oh, come here, bud. Check that out. Rolled out of bed this morning, brushed my teeth, washed my face. Took a couple steps down here, made a few casts, and here we have it. The first fish of the day, and a new species. This right here is the smallmouth bass. They can get pretty big. This is a small example of one, similar to our small example of the muskie yesterday. But this is a fish that is considered, in, in some cases, at least for trout anglers in Maine, a nuisance.
but it's very much embraced up here in New Brunswick. They uh, actually hold tournaments for these fish and they're a lot of fun, as you saw there. This is a fish that will go absolutely insane on a topwater lure, no matter what the size is. What a great start to the day. Let's send them back. spotters are on. You know what that means. We're after the brown bass. I should probably clean these lenses first. Wow, I can barely see you guys there for a second. Although it may look the same, this is a completely different system in many ways, mainly because we're above the first dam in the Johns. And what that essentially means is this water that we're fishing right now is no longer tidal. There won't be any striped bass, nor will there be any sturgeon in this system, but there will be some big smallmouth potentially some big musky too. It's so cool, I figured we'd switch things up, try to catch a, a nice big smallmouth and cross that off our list first. Uh, my buddy Ben, who we fished with yesterday, said that this is a good place to get a nice big old small jaw. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And I think later in the day, we'll probably drop back down to the tide waters and see if maybe we can go one-on-one uh, -on -one with a big dinosaur-like fish. First things first though, let's see if we can get ourselves a bias. Today. If I don't see him, I'm not staying around. That's the program ski. Here we go. Oh, there we go. That was sweet. Finally got one. It's a smallie. It's a smallie. Found him. Gosh, man, he, dude, he went on that thing like fly on poop. First fish in the boat. This whole area of the river is so crazy. Like yesterday we were fishing a max depth of like 20 something feet, but now we're in like, oh, look at that. I didn't even have him hooked. He was on the, the bait keeper. That's insane. Decent little smallmouth. Put him back. See ya. We're after something much bigger. It's really cool to see how this river varies. I mean, you can fish a hundred feet of water at one point or go up shallow and, and throw big top waters off over grass. But we're gonna try to see if we can get a bigger smallmouth than that today. It's gonna be a bit of a challenge because I've never fished down here before and we're relying just basically on previous bass knowledge from lakes that I fished in Maine. So far, so good. We got one bass in the boat. Oh, he just dropped it, come on. Felt like a decent one. Bummer. Don't worry about it, little guy. So much for bigger fish up here. My God, these things are tiny. Squeaks. They're so aggressive though, my Lord. I might be a little bit better. Oh, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better. High one pounder, low twos maybe. Working our way up. Despite the size of these fish, it's the fight that really counts. Look at that, dude. Good, cheap fun. It's been a while since I... I caught Canadian smallmouth and forgot how much I loved them. Decent fish. Decent fish. There we go. See you later, dude. Thank you for biting. Whew. Here's how we're getting bit right now. One of the best ways that I can think of to find smallmouth on a new body of water is to throw finesse stuff. Perfect finesse lure that has been tried and true over the past couple of years is the rattling Ned. Just on a eighth ounce jig head, this is a tungsten jig head with eight pound flora carbon and some eight pound braided line as the main line. Light spinning gear, seven foot two, seven foot four, seven foot, depends on what you like. I like a seven two or seven four because I can get that bait out there a little farther. The longer the rod, the better the cast, the longer the cast. And while I'm not familiar with this section of the river and I've never fished it before, I do know smallmouth. So I'm basically taking what I know from previous smallmouth bass outings and applying it here on this river. So I'm just gonna play around with some different techniques. We might throw a popper back here. There could be some current in the back of this cut, but so far so good. Got some good bites, one nice smallmouth. 
the main objective is to catch that that elusive four pounder, four or five pounder, which may sound small to you guys back home and if you're fishing Erie or St. Lawrence, but it's a quality fish for up here. Yep, there is. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> Some little tiny bass <laughs> on the popper. That's fun. They're so aggressive, dude. They're so freaking aggressive. Squeaky. See, bro. See if there's any smallies in the grass. This would be kind of cool. Get to some brown fish in the veg. Ooh, that's a good one. It's either a bass or a pickerel. Whatever it is, it was, ate it like a freaking champ. No, it's a bass. That was so cool, dude. Bass on the frog. <laughs> it's a better one too. That's more the size we want. Ooh, and he just came undone. That was awesome. No way. Freaking smallmouth on the frog. I feel like that's every bass angler's dream is to get on a frog bite with smallmouth just because it's it's not a fish that you really target on a frog. Like usually frog, green fish, brown fish, finesse, drop shot, stuff like that. But that was a decent lead. I saw some grass over here. And I'm like, might as well try to throw the toad in there. And sure enough, decent little one pound smallmouth. <laughs> it's so cool. It's fun catching these guys out of thick grass. Pretty unorthodox, but you can do it in these northern ponds. This guy's ready to go. Let's send him back. See ya. Thanks, dude. Jesus. He's ready to go. Let's see if we can get another. Yeah, it's super deep. There's probably more like this on this river, too. Certain time of the year, springtime, I bet this has got some actual fish in it. Not just some snakes. Ooh, that's a decent one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. Way up in the current. I am actually surprised. It's a good fish, probably close to a three pounder. Uh, maybe not. My eyes might be deceiving me, but it's, it's definitely the biggest small of the day. And it's way back here in this little waterfall. Oh no, that's a good fish. Let's go, baby. That's an MB, that's an MB toad. Oh yeah, that's how you know it's a good one. Just refuses to come up. Nice high two pounder, low threes. <laughs> Putting on a show too. Oh, so much fun, man. Musky yesterday, smallmouth today, and later on we might even switch gears and do some dino dangling. Come here, bud. Oh yeah, good fish. Let's see if I can not lose him. Come here, bud. Oh, he's gonna jump. He's gonna jump. <laughs> Come here, bud. Come here, bud. Oh, look at that. Biggest one of the day. Not too shabby. So cool. There's that rattling head right where it needs to be, roof of the mouth. That's awesome. Just kind of snuck back here and went on a little adventure to see where this water and this foam is coming from. And it led us to this nice smallmouth. There's so much longer in here too. You could, you could tell how different these smallmouth are than the ones you might find in the Lawrence or at Lake Erie. They're just very streamlined and narrow because if I had a guess, they'd just spend their whole life in the current. Beauty, send her back. See you later, bud. <laughs> that was worth it. That was worth it. Ooh, there's a nice one. Decent one. Not huge, but a decent one. A little one pounder. Something to keep us busy. Get you. Stop it. Stop it. LM busy. Thanks, bud. Mwah. Kiss him. Spank him. Send him back. Keep fishing. Never stop. back on the river. We burned uh, We burned quite a lot of daylight chasing after those smallmouth. Not the easiest, but we made it happen. We got that species ticked off the list. Now it's time to readjust. We're below the dam. This is uh, tidal water, and we're going to see if we can cross off that prehistoric dino fish, the sturgeon. I've always wondered where night crawlers come from, and I've now learned Canadian. Canadian night crawlers, straight from Canada. Get over here, night crawler. Ooh, he's pissed. But he is angry. I would be too if uh, someone was trying to hook me in the abdomen and feed me to a giant prehistoric fish. There we go. 
Yes, sir. Wad of crawlers on a circle hook barbless down to a six ounce weight that Ben was so kind to let me borrow. And the rod is just like a eight foot, uh, honestly, it's an eight foot like striper surf cast rod, which works perfectly for these sturgies. Bada bing, she's in. First rod in. You need any help? Look at all these tin rigs. Got an Alumacraft, got a Lund, got a Lund. All we need is like a G3 or a, what is that other one? Express. Small I kicked our teeth in, did a little bit of sturgeon fishing. Not, uh, that didn't go as planned either. Linking back up with Ben. He's off work now and it's always good to fish with somebody else. Like you go a little bit insane if you're solo. Like I start talking to myself, thinking to myself, like what am I doing out here? But to have someone else in the boat is, is always nice. And uh, later in the day, we're gonna actually fish into the night off of ben, Ben's rig. And you know, Ben's a guy down here and one of his specialties is trolling for muskie, which is honestly kind of fun. Like I'm not a huge trolling enthusiast, but if you're gonna troll for one fish and one fish only, it's the sclunch. So we're gonna do a bit of that too. And the crazy thing is we could be trolling in waters where not only there's muskie, but also 40 inch striper. Not too many places on planet earth where you can do that. Where do you wanna go for, we fished there for a bit. I wasn't, wasn't seeing much, wasn't getting bit. Um, Walk around the corner, it'll be out of the wind. Yeah, it's a good fun. idea. New spot, up river a bit. Water's moving pretty swift. It's only like nine feet-ish, either eight feet-ish here. Sun's going down, but we still have plenty of daylight left. Sun basically goes fully down here in New Brunswick on, at like 1040-ish, 1030-ish, because we're on Atlantic time zone, which is an hour ahead of the East Coast. Oh, that felt like a sturgeon. Got him? Nope. Oh my god, it's not good now. Oh, I do have him. What is that, a smallmouth? Freaking smallmouth. <laughs> these, are the, these are the exact fish we were trying to catch earlier, and you know. Perfect coach Yeah, I mean, got her. Where else can you catch a smallmouth on a sturgeon rig? I don't know. Pretty unique. These are the, <laughs> these are the guys that were absolutely duping us a couple hours ago, and now, uh, now they're just willing to eat. I just wanted to eat a freaking night crawl on the bottom. What a doofus. Get back down there, bud. The bite was convincing. I was like, that actually might be a sturgeon. What a letdown. What a letdown. It's a bite. One more time. Oh my God, dude. Oh, it's just way heavier than those bites prior. Oh, oh. I'm gonna put some 40 on here. Yeah. How does that, does that break 20 pound plural? I mean, it is a heavy rod, I guess. All right, 0 for 2 on the sturgeon. Seems like they're getting a little bit more rowdy at sunset and uh, broken off twice. We're upgrading our line though, throwing 40 pound mono. Some some stronger stuff, but it's also got some give and some stretch. Really, we're using 20 pound floor, and I think maybe that was just popping off a little too quickly, but same hook, same everything, just upgrading the line. I think we can do it. If we can get a sturgeon before sundown, this would be, this would be all worth it. It's been a grind all day. The Johns can either be feast or famine. Muskies are supposed to seen, you reckon? Oh, over the years, probably, I would say over 300 in the last four years. Seriously? Yeah. Holy sh**. Well, we've transitioned from the Lund to the Illumicraft, one tinny onto the next. This is Ben's boat. This is where he makes the magic happen. This is his expertise. Now, granted, we've had a difficult day, so I'm a, <laughs> 
I'm not promising anything, but we are out here and we are going to try and we are with the best. So we're gonna see if we can make it happen. Let's keep broad tip, like in the water even. Basically just, yeah. I always just add an angle and pressure on to the side. Okay, got it. Rod tip down, keep cranking. Words of wisdom from Ben. You got a 40 inch inch striper on that? 48, yeah. Holy. Same exact one or just, just that this pattern? Is the one. That's it. Wow. It's Almost cool. the nose out of it. It's a cool color. Custom painted right here. How do you not just hang that up and put it on the mantle afterwards? Just gotta keep fishing with it? Yep, I agree. Sun is just nearly dipped behind the horizon. All four rods are in. We're trolling at a nice slow pace. Now we wait. Well, we're gonna check out one more spot before it gets too late. Not from thus far. We did see some fish in the graph, but no takes. Keep trying though. Well, we've uh, we've ran Fredericton clean of all its night crawlers. We're gonna try one more spot, see if we can get some sturgeon bait for the morning. It's been a grueling past two days, but today's a new one. Start fresh, see if we can pick up from where we left off and catch that elusive dino. Worms, Katie and Kit Kats, we're ready. Only the sturgeon were as hungry as I am right now. It's time to get some St. John's redemption. No more messing around. Day number three. We're starting off with sturgeon. Let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, man. Can't be any worse than yesterday. Put ourselves in about eight feet of water today. Try something a little bit deeper. We've been fishing six foot the past two days, but we'll try this eight foot. A little more current over here, and it's also bare. Bare bottom, not as much grass. I don't think the sturgeon are really keen on the grass. The perch are in the grass, and I want to stay away from the perch today. Nine feet, it might be a little too deep, but Seeing so there's one right there, there's a sturgeon. I can barely see it. I believe that's a sturgeon. Possibly. Yeah, it looks like this, this could be a good spot. 10 foot, that might be a little too deep. Let's sneak out into some shallower stuff real quick. That was a sturgeon. Got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! This feels big, I don't know what it is. Oh my god, it's a sturgeon! It's a sturgeon! We got a sturgeon. Oh my God, let me get to the front. Oh my God, it's a sturgeon. It's the fish we've been after. Oh my God, I gotta get the net. I gotta get the net. Oh my God, no way, no way. Is this it? Could this be it? Oh my gosh, in the net. <laughs> we did it. We caught ourselves a short nose sturgeon. Put it there, Caleb. We absolutely grinded for this fish. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I cannot freaking believe it. You have no idea. I'm a tub of worms and 30 minutes away from going absolutely insane right now. These sturgeon have really thrown me for a loop. We finally have one of the nets. This is the fish that I was the most excited to show you guys on this trip because it's a fish you cannot catch anywhere else on the East Coast. For whatever reason, it's banned to chase after these fish in the US. But once you cross the border here in New Brunswick, it's totally fair game as long as you're using barbless hooks and fishing after July 1st, you can legally chase after these fish and catch them. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the freaking short nose sturgeon. This thing is so freaking cool. Take a gander at that. That right there 
as the fish we've been after. Somehow this fish posed to be even more of a challenge than the muskie. It's taken us two days to encounter one of these and bring them on the boat. We finally have them. I know this fish may seem crazy, but these sturgeon are widespread throughout the United States. There's very different types of them. Um, I've never personally caught a round nose, or short, no short nose, I should say, uh, but this is my first one ever. Just take a look at this fish. This fish doesn't have scales like most traditional species out there, like a trout or some sort. They are very, very cool. They've got sucker mouths, bottom feeders. They use those little barbels down there to feel and sense and detect bait on the bottom. And these uh, little white pointy things right along their spine and the sides of them is meant for defense. So when they're little, they can avoid prey. Very cool fish. These uh, sturgeon can get up to over freaking nine feet in length. Not this specific species, but sturgeon in general. And they're really cool. They're gentle giants and they're one of my favorite fish ever alongside you know, gar and other old fish that have been around for many, many years. I think we may have just caught that fish in the nick of time. The storm is re-emerged and is about to crank us right now. Those clouds look dark and ominous and uh, they're probably full of rain. And I'm not looking to get soaked, so I'm glad we got the sturgeon when we did. And I'm happy that we got a chance to show you guys yet another fish that is available to target, catch, and release in this river. I got another one, I got another one, I got another one. I got another one, I got another one, I got another one, dude. Hold on to that net. I think I got another sturgeon. I think I got another sturgeon. Oh my gosh, dude, no way. This spot is loaded. I believe I have two sturgeon. What is going on here? This is madness. We went from not catching anything to doubling up. It's another sturgeon. Oh my gosh. We have two sturgies. I'm gonna get this guy in the net. Caleb, watch your foot. I believe this is an Atlantic sturgeon. This is a different species. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude. Put him in the net. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, dude, the current's too strong. Him. Oh my God, dude, I can't get him in the net. Help me out, Caleb, help me out, there we go. <laughs> we have two sturgeon in the net. What the, f okay, I'm gonna get them both unhooked. This is absolutely insane. I think they're two different species. One's an Atlantic and then one's a short nose. I don't know, we'll have to see. Let me get them unhooked. We went from not catching a single fish to doubling up. Barbless hooks, comes right out. Holy hell. <gasps> Caleb, what the hell? It was looking so loom and gloom, quite literally, and also emotionally, just because we weren't able to catch a single one. And as I'm talking to you guys about the one in the net, another one bites. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was insane. I don't know if, I think these are two different species too, which would be really cool if we just caught two examples. I wanna say this one is a short nose and the other one's an Atlantic. I might have to pull up my phone real quick. Holy f dude. Put it there, we're sturgeon slayers now, baby. Shout out to my boy, uh, Kevin Estrada. He's one of the guys that really got me uh, infatuated and in love with these beauties. They're so cool, they fight hard, they get you pumped, and they're like the coolest looking fish. Woo! They look a little different. One is darker than the other. Right now I'm trying to ID both these fish. I'm 90% sure they're both the same species. But the one I just caught is a little bit darker and his nose seems to be a bit pointier. This one might have to be subject to y'all's opinion. We'll do a side-by-side -side line, hold each up and get him back in the water. But I'm, if I was a Batman, I'd say they're the same species. The other one just looks really dark. Here is the second sturgeon I just caught. He uh, was so rude to interrupt us while we were talking about his buddy. Very cool fish. Oh, they're so powerful too. Even at this size, they have a lot of energy that they need to exert. I cannot imagine catching one of the giant, giant Atlantics out of here. Because in theory, there could be some eight footers swimming alongside, just not as common as most would think. I don't know if you guys can catch that, but there's those scoots I was talking about. It's one of the main causes for anglers breaking off, and it's been our biggest struggle is keeping the line off of the scoots. Those are sharp. Those are not to be messed with. Look at him use his mouth to try to grab some water. And by the way, these fish are good out of water for a little bit of time. Of course, we're not gonna keep them out for too long, but I also really wanna show you guys and advocate the importance of, you know, catching these fish and then putting them back, admiring their beauty, and then sending them on their way to live another day. Back in the water they go, double release. To think that we went from not catching a single one to now holding two. Look at them side by side together, they're like best buddies. First one just kicked off, onto our second one. See you later, bud. <laughs> doesn't matter if you're a musky angler, doesn't matter if you're a tarpon angler, or if you like chasing after GTs. You have to admit and appreciate 
something as old and unique and interesting as a sturgeon. <sighs> wow. So what this means is the only fish we have left to catch on our list is the striped bass. Now, the most difficult fish was the muskie, and that was actually the easiest to catch. So I'm a little concerned. We grinded our absolute nuts off first sturgeon bite, and I'm a little wary about the striper. We are very far from the Atlantic Ocean, so if there's gonna be any striper up here, they're gonna be in small numbers. They will be big, but they will be not in giant schools. So what we may have to do is travel down river to find a little bit of more tidal water up here. There's not much of a fluctuation, maybe a foot or so, but for the most part, this is 100% fresh water and it's not very much dictated by what the ocean is doing. But anyway, we got sturgeon done. That was a huge success. Shout out to Caleb, put it there, bud. The patience is real. We've been going to sleep at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. every night. Last night we did a ton of trolling. The other night we were dumping cards and just trying to make something happen, but listen, it's not for lack of effort. We are out here absolutely grinding. One more fish down for the St. John's trifecta. Let's keep cranking. Ooh. Another one, another one, another one, another one. No, decent one, decent one. Decent one, my reel's messing up on me. Oh my gosh, it's a good one. It's a good one, dude. It's a little bit better. This one might jump. Buzzer beater bite. I'm gonna need to get to where you are, Caleb. This one feels a little bit better. Oh yeah, about the same size. Nice one, dude. Wow, this one just fought way harder. Oh my goodness. Get in here, buddy. <laughs> Sturgeon number three. Woo! The net was still messed up from the last catch. Oh my gosh. When that fish bit, I was literally looking at striped bass spots because we were about to pack up. I was gonna give it like five more minutes before heading off the water, packing up all the surging gear, and then switching over to some, hopefully some big spooks or swim baits. And then this guy said, hey, wait, before you guys uh, catch my buddy, the striped bass, I wanna bite the freaking worm. Sturgeon number three, this is two more, or I should say even like three more sturgeon than I had even expected to catch today, given how, uh, how slow the bite's been. Just take a gander at their, uh, their heads. They have these pretty wild patterns. I don't know what they mean or if they serve any purpose or if, you know, that is a part of uh, a part of their evolution. I have no idea, but it's pretty neat. It looks like uh, almost like fireworks or cobwebs all over its, uh, its nose and its head region. All right. Oh, hold the net, hold, hold the net. Doubles, doubles. Oh, she just came off. Dude, we, just, we almost had another double. <laughs> they must come in waves. I think this one broke me off. Oh no, I'm still good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we just almost had another double. I had him pinned for a second, but the barb was hooks. It makes it difficult. Okay, let's get this guy out of the nut. Jeez, man, your buddies keep interrupting. Wicked cool fish. I love them. If you've never caught a sturgeon before, I highly recommend it. Doesn't matter what the species is or the size, they're all cool in their own unique little ways. I've never gotten a chance of, to catch this specific species and I can happily say it won't be my last. Ooh, he's, he's not ready to freaking give up quite yet. And now, the best part, sending them back, letting them live so they can grow and get bigger and you can enjoy their fight for another day. I don't care. <laughs> You see that? You didn't see that. He was flicking off your drone. That guy down, that, that, that. This guy right down here, pulling the kayaks down. How you doing? That wasn't very nice. That was us, man. Yeah, we're filming ourselves, not you guys. Yeah. <laughs> Weird.
see what's lurking down here. If I was a striped bass, I would definitely be using this, that's for sure. But it is kind of late in the season. Oh, what the hell is that? There's something down there. There's a striper. He's going to see that. He's going to come up and clobber it. It looks like where a striper would hang out. Oh, there's one. There's one right under me. Right under me. Two of them. 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 They're right under me. Look at, look at, look at. What the hell was that? Caleb, did you get a look at that? That wasn't a striper. What the f was that? That wasn't a striper. I have no idea what that was, but it was big. Did not have a striper's mouth. That was so weird. What the hell did I just see? It almost looked like a bluefish, but I'm 90% sure there's no bluefish in here. Three of them came off the rock, like super aggressive. Like, I have no idea what that was. It was almost creepy. I have no idea what that was. They're right there on the rocks. What we're doing right now is a complete shot in the dark. As you know, we've ticked off everything but the striped bass. And from what I've heard, the striped bass in here are big, they're giant, but they're very few and far between, at least right now. You know, we're late in the season as far as the striper run goes, and there's fish that have traveled hundreds of miles up rivers and up the coast, and they've just kind of all spread out, it seems. I'm doing the only thing that I know how to do, and that is to throw a giant nine inch spook. I will take that back. It's not the only thing I know how to do, but it's the one thing that I have a ton of confidence in. Day one, we were musky fishing. Day two, we were in 100 feet of water, 30 feet of water looking for smallmouth. And then of course, day three is today. And you know, we're in a section of the river that looks like the Louisiana marsh. It is so strange, but we're gonna keep cranking, see if we can make something out of nothing. And um, regardless, we checked off the sturgeon. That's what's really important. Hoo! It's looking really sh you know. Crazy weather today, huh? Oh, there we go. I got some. Oh my gosh, dude, something big. Something big. Oh, smally. No way. Smallmouth. Freaking smallmouth crushed me. Finally. Finally. I cannot believe there's a smallmouth this far. Oh. He broke me off. That was a new jerk bait. How did he break me off? It's a freaking 12 pound test. Well, gang, it's official. I suck. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, my broken off small is followed by torrential downpour here at about six minutes and 90 seconds. Let's fish all down. There's one, another one. Ooh. Oh my God, dude, it's a giant. Where's the net? Oh my God, this is a giant smallmouth. This thing is so big. Holy sh this is a giant smallmouth. Drop me the net. Holy sh this is a giant smallmouth. What the f Dude, that thing's huge. Is that a smallmouth? I have no idea what I have hooked. It's about to jump. Oh, it's a big smolly. What the f I did not think we'd get a big smallmouth today. Holy sh That's a good fish. Oh my gosh, dude. We came, we came out here for the sole idea to catch striper because a little bit of this is uh, affected by the tide. And I just got kind of like discouraged not knowing where to start down here, so I threw a freaking jerk bait. First fish jumped me off and snapped me. This is a big fish. This is probably close to four pounds. This is a big smallmouth. Definitely the biggest small of the trip. This thing is going, look at him swim into the current. This fish is insane. Holy dude, this is a big fish. Big fish. I'm totally okay with switching up gears and chasing after big smallmouth if we can't find striper. Oh my gosh, dude, this thing's huge. This thing is huge. Get in the net, cuz. Oh no, he just popped me off. God damn it. Too big of a net, I should've just grabbed him. Holy shit. that thing was so big. No way, dude. That was like a 21 inch smallmouth. Oh my gosh, I suck. I actually suck. That's a heartbreak. That's okay, I'm gonna go back in there. I'm gonna get his big, big brother. Holy hell, that thing was huge. What an idiot. I can't believe I messed that up. All right, I shouldn't have gone musky net. Like, what the hell? That was so stupid. Can't fit a freaking three pound small up in a musky net. God, wait. What the f 
Yeah, I stopped and I restart. There's another one. Another good one, dude. Another good one. Oh my god. I wasn't recording. Another giant. Another giant. Oh my god, another giant smallmouth. I'm just gonna grab this guy. Dude, the, all of these fish are, are like four plus pounds. There's not a single fish down here that is small. This is so nuts, man. We are not that far from the ocean. And there's smallmouth, big ones too. We were looking for these size fish in like, a, like 30 feet of water the other day, yesterday, matter of fact. And they just happen to be right here, all the way down the Johns. Big fish about to jump. Watch, watch this, watch this. Oh my gosh. That is so cool, dude. Oh, what a day. What a freaking day this has been. Holy hell. Holy hell on the jerk bait. <laughs> He's about to come up again. Watch this. He's about to jump right by the boat. <laughs> I don't even care if he comes off. These fish are just so cool to watch. Go freaking airborne. Oh, I don't think he's as big as the last one, but it's a good one. He's gonna jump like on the boat. This is craziness. He's going under the boat. <sighs> Jeez, dude, I've never, I've never fished for small to fight this hard. This is crazy. This one's probably close to three. Close to four, honestly, it's a good fish. That last one though, <laughs> that was a begging. That was a begging. Ah. Oh. I got him, I got him. There we go. Look at that fish. So obviously throughout this series, it's, it's been about getting that trifecta, the big fish trifecta, but it has been my goal also as like an addition to get a, a big smallmouth here on the Johns. And I'd say we succeeded in doing so with this fish. Look how long this thing's. I gotta put him on the bump. He's not very fat, but he's long. I'm gonna guess probably close to 19. No, no. He's over 20. That's over a 20 inch smallmouth. Not very fat, but just long and lean. This is how these river fish are built. They're built like brown missiles. Holy, we got a boat going Mach 90 around the corner. Such a cool fish. We're gonna put her back, see if we can get another. Unbelievable. 20 inch smallmouth. Oh my lord, that was so dope. Whew, that was insane. That was insane. Oh, there's tons of, oh, big smallmouth on bait. Big smallie on bait, oh my gosh. Big smallie on bait, that's what they're eating out here is this freaking bait. Oh, he's coming up for it. They're both coming up for it, good ones. Got him, got him, good one. He's gonna jump, it's a good one. Oh, little guy, sorry, just little guy. <laughs> Still a smallmouth. They're down there falling bait. <laughs> that was so cool, dude. That was so cool. All this current just draws in life and all these smallies have to do is remain head on, not even freaking hunt or move. Squeaky. Just ripping a jerk bait in this current. I'm still seeing big ones down there. I might throw a big jig here in a second. There's actually a lot of fish down here. I can't believe it. They're all big too. They're all freaking nice ones. I think we just need to throw something like directly on the bottom for these big lazy ones because they're getting a little smart now. I'm gonna tie a little jig on and see if we can't get some action there. Whew, this is nuts. We're back at the Airbnb and we're rigging rods. Coming up with tomorrow's game plan is kind of a challenge because I'm thinking we could play it safe. We could go to the mouth of the St. John's, basically on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, and have a really good shot at catching our last goal species, that being the striped bass, which would complete the trifecta for the St. John's River Slam. Or we could attempt the impossible. Here's my plan. Grab a nice cold Molson's, rig up every single rod, everything from smallmouth all the way to sturgeon, and get prepared for an ultimate fishing send in the morning. Not only chase after our final species, that being striped bass, but I'm thinking let's attempt to catch every single game fish readily available in the St. Johns River, starting from sturgeon, working our way up to muskie, then possibly a nice smallmouth, and ending on the one we need the most, that being the striped bass. Chances are, it might go insane trying to catch every single one in one single day, but this has been an absolute goal of mine to come here to make it happen. And seeing as this is our last day, let's make the most of it. We've got quite uh, the rigging session ahead of us, so instead of maybe grabbing one cold Molson, maybe two, we're piecing out, signing out, getting prepared for the ultimate fishing mission tomorrow. Wish us luck. 
Let's see if we can make it happen. Good morning, wieners. This is it. The final day at a chance to catch the big fish trifecta here on the St. Johns River in New Brunswick, Canada. We've got the muskie, we've got the sturgeon. As a little side quest, we've even got ourselves a 20 inch smallmouth. And now it is in our hands to catch a striper. We are about to set sail at the Airbnb, but before I do that, I want to show you something kind of neat that comes with this place. Um, check this out. If you uh, walk on through the living room, back here there's this door and if you crank the handle i think it's let me see one two three and give the lock a little half turn you just open it up and go straight through to the river this is it the end of the saint john's river we started our journey in this trip at the very first dam on the Johns, which is many, many miles away from where we're at now. This is where the St. Johns dumps into the Bay of Fundy, which is all salt water. And you could guess this is where a lot of good striper fishing can be had. We've got some ridiculously fishy conditions. Like if I were to paint a perfect picture of what it would look like to catch a giant striper, the scenery would look like this. Of course, we're starting off with one of my favorites. Nine inch spook. We're gonna see if we can find one striper. All we need is one striper. And we're heading back on the road and going up north, seeing if we can get that big smallmouth, catch another sturgeon. And if we're really ridiculously lucky, we might even get a muskie. But before we can even do that, I gotta catch a striper. This is the really last fish that, that has been a challenge for me. So we'll see. Nothing so far. I've made probably 20 casts, no sign of life. Not giving up. Oh boy. Got her. I didn't get the vibe that there was going to be something down there to, that would absolutely crush that thing. It would have happened on site. This place is pretty crazy. Where we're at right now is actually uh, known as the Reversing Falls. It's called that because the tide comes in and the river goes out and literally the falls go in and out and left and right. It's just madness. And in here is some serious turbid water and the striper in theory love that. but. Nothing over here. Didn't even see a single bird or a fish jump or anything. There were some guys next to us too and they didn't hook up. So let's uh, let's try for another hour somewhere else. And you know, I don't want to spend too much time here because we got other fish to catch. Really hope we can make it happen. Not looking so good for the striper mission. And we're losing tide right now, which sucks. Maybe I didn't get out far enough on that last one. Send the nerd. Let's see if I can get that seal to bite. Oh, 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 that was a little too close. No, 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 no. I don't know who's more spooked, him or me. Okay, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Let's move. Almost caught a seal. All right, let's go hit the small one spot. We still have a shot of a striper too. I mean, it's not like it's completely a wash. There are striper up the river right now. I just, uh, I don't have a ton of faith in there being numbers. Our Hail Mary to reverse falls did not pay off. No striped bass for me. It's okay though, we still have a shot at getting one all the way up in Fredericton. It's just, uh, there's not as many fish up there. They are big and they are there, but there's not as many, but I think we're gonna have to abandon this, head up north, fish a smallmouth, stretch the river real quick, see if we can get a nice big smallmouth and then target musky sturgeon and potentially a big striper in one spot. We gotta move though, cause we're like two hours away from uh, from our fishing zone. This was a bust, but hey, there's plenty of time left to make up for it.
off where we basically left off yesterday. We're not going to spend too much time here because we already have caught a smallmouth, but I think it'd be fun to get another big one uh, to add to the Grand Slam finale. We are back where basically we ended yesterday. This is where I jumped two nice smallmouth, but ended up catching one nice 20 incher. Not going to spend too much time here, but this is a part of today's goal. I'm, I'm trying to catch all four in less than 24 hours. And rather than catching a little one on the upper end of the St. John's, I'm really challenging myself. I want to get a big one. I did find some big fish here yesterday, so we're going to try it out. I'm going to jump to this little spot and then maybe two others. Probably not going to spend more than an hour and a half here because we still have three other species to catch. <laughs> this has probably been one of the more challenging videos that Caleb and I have ever filmed for a couple different reasons and let me complain for a little bit. One of which, I've never been here before. I'm relying on you know a little bit of knowledge that Ben has given me and a couple locals have given me, but I'm really trying to figure this place out for myself. And it is a huge system to fish. This is probably one of the biggest rivers that I've ever had the, uh, the pleasure of wetting a line in. Um, on top of that, we've had just weird weather every single day. And then finally, it's it's difficult in my opinion because you're having to pivot from different techniques. Like this might be great for small, but I might have to travel another 30 miles upriver to be in good territory for muskie. Granted, it seems like there's fish everywhere you go throughout the system, but really what I'm trying to do is put myself in high percentage areas or potential high percentage areas so that that way I'm not wasting a ton of time, you know, like searching around a general area for a couple bites, um, which leads to my next point, And that is, I don't know why I'm throwing a frog right now, I pick up the jerkbait so you a nice 20 inch smallmouth. It seems like there's more, let me see. Yeah, so I wonder why this was cranking yesterday and then today it's after a good bit of rain, it's just boom. There's one fish, good one. Good one, big one, giant. There we go, that's the fish we're after. That is the fish we're after. That could be our 20 incher. Let's freaking go, boys. Let's freaking go. Good fish. Got 10 pound test on. They were acting finicky yesterday at 12, so I downsized just a, t just a tad. I'm gonna go back here with you, Caleb. Oh boy, it's a good fish. It's a mighty good fish. Definitely a St. John's River special smallmouth. Oh yeah, good. Look at that boil. That's how you know it's a good one. And they kick up all that water like that. Good fish, man. Good fish. Come here, pal. Oh, he doesn't like that. He does not like that he's got a face full of jerk right now. There he goes. <laughs> they are freaking psycho in here. Probably about a three pounder. Good fish that will take him. Oh, here. I got you. Oh, look at that. Let me go to the front of the boat for a better shot. Solid smallmouth bass. This is the exact size fish I was hoping for. So that way we feel a little bit better about chasing after the sturgeon. I didn't want a dink smallmouth. I wanted a good one. This is no giant, but it is still a very quality fish. And hey, we'll take him. <laughs> what a beauty. Let's send him back. First fish of the day. It took quite some time, but we had to try for the stripers. The small have never let us down though. Big or small. They are always ready and willing, it seems like. Whew, that's awesome. Good, good freaking bite. Good freaking fish. Good? Yeah. Well, we've done it. Got our first fish of the day knocked off. Nice 18 inch smallmouth quality bass. We're now up river about 20 miles. We are basically in Fredericton. This is where we saw some pretty nice sturgeon jump and this is also where we caught three other good ones. And I'm thinking we have a good shot here. The water's a little dirty. It's moving, it's cranking. These fish don't really rely on their sight too much. So I'm not worried about this change in water clarity. Uh, we've got some really good worms. I'm thinking uh, we catch one sturgeon here and then pick up the musky rods, pick up the striper rods, see if we can go for an absolute Hail Mary. We still have a lot of day left. Thankfully here in New Brunswick, we're on Atlantic time. So the sun doesn't really set until like 10.30. So we have plenty of freaking daylight. We've got plenty of worms and uh, we've got plenty of freaking confidence. That's, that's the key with fishing. As long as you have confidence, you're gonna catch. Oh gosh, sturgeon. Got him. Sturgeon, baby. Oh, she just came undone. That was a good one. <sighs> Marbles hooks. That'll do it. I wonder if I broke off. Damn, that was a good fish. No, it didn't break off. Shoot. There's a fish. There's a fish. Oh, there's
there he is. He just jumped. <laughs> just a wee little dude. Wow, we're in a good little spot here. There's definitely some fish around. Oh my gosh, that's the second strike. Did you get that? That was so cool. He literally, he like knew he messed up. He's like, ah, shoot, that's that's got a hook on it. He's like, ah, I'm an idiot. Oh my God, you see that? That was huge. Huh? That was such a big fish, dude. Five footer all day. So big. I think the GoPro definitely got it. Is this a fish? Oh, it's current. Oh, shit. that was a good bite. Fish. Oh, what is that? Smally. Smally fast the whole time. I've never seen that happen before. Catching smallies while sturgeon fishing. Who would have freaking thought? <laughs> We've caught more of these smallmouth trying to catch sturgeon than I think we have actually smallmouth trying to catch smallmouth. It's freaking nuts. Oh, what a doofus. Oh my god! No jack, I guess. This is my last night crawler. No sturgeon. 50 crawlers. It's a shame. By the way, you won't be able to tell if that's rain or tears coming from my face. You'll just have to guess. You have to make the, the assumption. Look at that, all gone. Pour one out for the homies. Pour one out for the sturgeon. Perch and swans just devoured all my worms. And after this, we gotta chase after freaking striper and musky. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. Musky, 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 net, 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 me, net me. Musky, 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 musky. Big one. No, it just pulled hooks. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. Save the day. It was a f giant. It was a 40 inch all day. <sighs> right under the boat. I'm just examining the uh, the only thing I have to show for my musky bite. That fish ate it head first those teeth marks and that giant piece of rubber oh well this is the reality of fishing trips you set out with an expectation whether it be high or low but you always have an expectation no matter what anyone says when you plan a trip like this you have something in mind as to how it's going to go down for me personally i thought we could do it i thought we could complete the trifecta i thought we could find a striper today I thought that we for sure could catch a sturgeon and a part of me was like yeah I think we could probably catch a muskie seeing as to how quickly and fluid we were able to catch one day number one and to be honest I wasn't wrong about any of those things with the exception of maybe the striper I don't know where the hell the striper live in this river but I'm sure as hell nowhere near this boat regardless uh I got my teeth kicked in yesterday I was feeling really amped last night I was having myself a mulch I'm like I can do this for me it was like I'm figuring something out new every day and I'm learning something every cast that I make in this river and I feel like I'm just kind of figuring it out and I got really close the execution was just a little bit too short but 
Anyway, we've got quite the drive back up to Maine. It is almost 8 p.m. and our drive consists of another three hours. So I think this is it. As much as I want to keep throwing a, uh, a giant all-white bulldog at these bridge pilings, I think uh, I think I'd rather not go insane tonight. And you know what? Let's get uh, let's get high on the on the good notes and and just remember how awesome it was to get those bites after really long lulls. I definitely will come back here. Um, and now I know what to expect. And I, and I have a bone to pick with this river. The, the St. John's River has kicked my ass many times, although it's the home of my biggest small bass ever and my first ever sturgeon. I, uh, I think I'm gonna come back. I bid for all, to all you beautiful wieners. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, drop a comment, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. We'll make another one of these series happen very soon. Peace and out, signing out. As always, folks, keep fishing, never stop.